using a scanner that can read live data to diagnose O2 sensors or catalytic converter. Where's my finger? Sorry, there we go, okay. These are perfectly normal reading O2 sensors. If you look at bank one, sensor one, and bank two, sensor one, you see how the numbers, they will fluctuate all over the place. All the way down to 100 millivolts, all the way up to 900 millivolts, they will bounce around and bounce around. That's what they're supposed to do, reading fuel trims. Sensor two, bank or sensor one bank two sensor two bank two whatever the bank twos these should read a fairly consistent number usually right around the six seven hundred millivolt range anywhere from five to eight they just should be solid they shouldn't go all the way down to 100 and all the way up to 900 if they're doing that the O2 sensor is good. You have a bad catalytic converter. Sorry, my camera's focusing on my finger. So, to restate that again, if the sensor two on either bank, if they're fluctuating just like uh, bank one, sensor one, if they're fluctuating the same, sensor one and sensor two, you've got a bad catalytic converter. Always. The only time you usually have a bad O2 sensor is if one of these are not moving from like, say, 4,500 millivolts. It'll just stay right at 4,500 and it won't move at all ever. That's a bad O2 sensor. Or if you get an error code for O2 sensor heater circuit that's a bad O2 sensor. It's not detecting the heater circuit working. And when that's the case, first thing you wanna do is check this fuse for the heater circuit. If it's blown, chances are the O2 sensor heater inside has shorted out and it blew the fuse. So you'll wanna replace that O2 sensor and then replace the fuse. That was my little ramble about O2 sensors and catalytic converters because people will fight to the death about this and this is the proper way to diagnose an O2 sensor or a catalytic converter.